Hello, this is Stephen Gatos from Variety. I have the great pleasure of speaking with uh, three people who made an extraordinary film. It's uh, shortlisted for the Oscars from Norway. Uh, the film's called Hope. Um, so we're going to talk for a few minutes and uh, folks are going to have the pleasure of seeing this film and seeing, uh, seeing it more. It's going to be around for a long time, obviously. Um, Maria, um, you are the director and writer of this film, but uh, more than that, um, this is a film very close to you because it came from your own life experience. Um, I'm told you were reluctant to mine to dig into this part of your life and turn this into art, to turn it into a movie. Is that uh, fairly accurate? Uh, yes. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, at, at a certain moment, it was as if I was making it against my own will. Um, but that was not, uh, that was because, mostly because I was really afraid to make a uh, very sentimental genre cancer movie. Yes. Yes. Well, you succeeded admirably, all of you, in doing the opposite of that, uh, which is extraordinary because the film is very focused. Andrea and Stellan, on your characters, Andrea, you're the person in the film who is dealing with a life-threatening uh, illness, and Stellan, you're the significant other of this person, and the intensity of the time frame. It's a few days in the lives of a couple grappling with uh, nothing short of, uh, of death. You know, one thing that came to my mind, having lived in a few places and, and having been around myself, um, what do you think, uh, I'll start with you, Andrea, what do you think your culture, the culture of Norway or the culture of Scandinavia, how do you think the culture generally deals with issues of death and, and uh, the subject matter of a film of uh, mortality? Do you think in, in your life experience, do you think it's a more healthy culture or do you think that it's something that people kind of keep buried under a table and don't want to talk about? Well, the last thing you said, I think. Um, here, I can, I can only speak for myself and my culture here in Scandinavia. And uh, we, we almost never talk about death. It's, uh, it's so uncomfortable and... Uh, but I think even if you live in a culture where it's um, less taboo, kind of, I think if you have kids and a life you love, uh, I think you will get so scared anyway. So I, yeah. I don't know if I have any great answer to that because I, most of us, we actually want to live. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It's and and but but it is interesting. And Stalin, um, do you think the culture of Northern Europe, the the culture you've grown up in, do you think it has a healthy attitude toward death, or have you been in other cultures that you feel is more open and and has a better, healthier relationship to this? I don't know. It's uh, uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, Probably in some ways, I think Scandinavia has a very healthy relationship to most subjects uh, compared compared to other Western countries. Uh, I mean, we we have a problem in in uh, in Western civilization now that that uh, uh, death is 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 taboo, aging is taboo. Uh, there's so many taboos around. Yeah. Um, so so. Uh, but I, I think you can, I mean, I could, you can talk to about sex with your children from the age of two, I think. And that's not uh, common in every culture. Yeah, yeah. so it's a healthier in general. And Maria, back to you. Um, in making this script and making this movie, um, was part of your thinking about creating this, thinking about your audience and, and how that there is a taboo or how, like you, the first thing you said was you knew one thing, you didn't want to make a sentimental disease of the week movie. What, what, what else did you know uh, about this project that, that you knew you either wanted or didn't want? Um, I, first of all, I never thought about an audience. 
because I was a test rabbit in my own laboratory, you know, seeing if I was at all able to write <laughs> at this stage. Uh, so um, I think I was very aware of that. I wanted to make something uh, very raw and naked and honest because that was the only thing which was interesting to me. Uh, studying myself, you know, uh, watching back three, four years, you know, what was it like to know that you were dying actually, that you had very short time left to live? What was going through my mind? How did I act on steroids? What did I do to my family, to my friends? Um, and fascinated. Yeah. Okay. You know, fascinated about what, how crystallized life becomes when you know it's over. And, and realizing also that life's so short. So that's why we don't talk so much about death because it's so short, you, you don't spoil it by, you know, death comes uh, early enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, good. it's bad enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you said something, Maria, that is at the heart of, uh, I think, you know, even those of us who work, like in my job at Variety and, and my background, even in filmmaking, it's still mysterious, the relationship between a director and actors, I think on every movie, on a movie with this kind of intensity, this kind of focus, uh, this kind of delicate calibration to make sure you avoid sentimentality, um, what would you say, and, and I'll, I'll start with you, Stalin, what would you say was the methodology or the, the way the three of you worked together to achieve Maria's goals on this? How, what benefited you the most to actually be able to succeed in what you've accomplished here, well, uh, it's uh, that's a couple of questions. Uh, you, you could say you could say that uh, uh, to to make this film work, we had to establish a relationship that was tangible between me and Andrea, and it had to be there whether we talk to each other or not. Especially from my point of view, of some, since I don't say much in the film, uh, but but, but uh, that has to be there, and it has to be real, and that that is sort of. That is the vehicle um, that 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 carries the 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 sort of the physicality of the story on. Uh, then you can say that uh, when it came, I'm I'm pretty I'm not very sentimental myself, uh, and I uh, totally I had the same fears as Maria had when she when she started started talking about the project. So so I was very happy uh, that she had the attitude she had towards the material. But, but it's also, we also tried different temperatures. When we shot the scenes, we shot them with different temperatures so she could balance it in the editing, which she brilliantly did. Wow, thank you, yeah. Andrea, what, uh, how would you uh, see what uh, Stalin just described? Well, I think, uh, I think that all three of us, uh, we have a dark sense of humor and uh, and um, I think uh, that was really important to me that Stella and I we could really laugh between takes. Um, that was that is one of my favorite memories from from the whole period was <laughs> <laughs> when we between all tears and uh, but this went very well, didn't it? <laughs> Between the takes. <laughs> and that was just so, oh, it was so wonderful because I, it's like, uh, it's like breathing to me to have this uh, sense of humor because it's really easy to get caught up uh, too much in the story and to lose yourself and, and be kind of sentimental yourself when in your acting, yeah. which is it, which is really dangerous. And uh, yeah. with Stellan, I, I had the, the best communication and Maria also, she also is, is, she doesn't like sentimentality and it was really easy to avoid, I think. Yeah. It was. Mm. You know, that's really uh, helpful to understand because um, Stellan was saying, you know, you had to work as a couple and you're telling me that the sense of humor, which is something very special that couples share. I think every yes. couple has their own sense of humor yeah. that they, they share. Now, the other thing, Maria, that, that Stella mentioned was turning the temperature up and down. Can you talk a little about that? Because that's fascinating to hear. I think the key to this movie is calibration. You know, mm -hmm. if the movie isn't perfectly calibrated, you don't have a movie. 
the movie is perfectly calibrated. And Stalin refers to that when he talks about the temperature going up and down. It's like cooking. You know, if you go up a little <laughs> too high, you burn the, the, the dinner. You know, if you take it down too long, you, it isn't cooked. <laughs> Can you talk that a little a really about good... your working and, and what Stalin describes as bringing the temperature up and down? What does he mean? I think it's, you know, on the one hand, it's the actor's temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it's very much also the cinematography. Yes. You know, it's the way we, it's, is it, is it a, it's like music. Is it a quick scene? Is it, you know, um, and knowing this and this, um, the DP and I and Manuel Alberto Claro, we have discussed ahead of the shoot. So we knew that this was this kind of scene and the actress didn't have to deal with that, you know, but we knew. So we knew those things. And with the actress, we had been talking a lot about what's the goal of the scene. But the temperature, uh, you know, it's like if the actress um, do their thing, you know, in the first take, we start, that's where you start. And then you move on. And then you play something a little bit like this or that. And then if Andrea, for example, if she, if it was a scene which was totally, you know, she was totally wet. <laughs> so, and then we always had a last dry take. Okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, you know, uh, an unsentimental film is not supposed to be without emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's a very emotional film. Absolutely. It's so, entirely so emotion. It's, it's a, it, there's an intensity to it, which I want to also talk about the maintenance. I'm glad you mentioned uh, uh, Mr. Claro, your uh, DP. I didn't get a chance to check. I, I know his history of his films. Had you worked with him before yourself? Yes, um, I've only made two movies and he made my first. <laughs> okay. So he made so Limbo. What do you think um, that DP, because it's, it, again, he's like the person who's not here with us, but it's kind of the fourth person in this conversation. Um, what do you think about his methodology? And that would be an open question also to the actors here. What is it about the way this DP works um, for all three of you that contributed to this being the perfect temperature? Shall I start or? Sure. Yeah. Um, he is all into not manipulating. He, he wants the camera to just, uh, you know, uh, to get the truth <laughs> uh, in a sense. Um, although, of course, you also always end up manipulating in the editing, etc. But still, um, he's, he, he is within the scene. He's within the actors. He's with, you know, he's uh, capturing things which are not decided ahead of the, of the take necessarily, but we know very well where we, what we want at the end. So he gets this freedom, which makes something very organic. Interesting. Now, Andrea, as an actor, um, the relationship with the DP, uh, how was it different on this film or, or, or how was it positive? Either, either question, what, what did you find in this relationship uh, uh, aided you and assisted you in, in this great performance that uh, you provided? Well, I, I, um, I usually, I just try to forget the DP, the photographer. It's, um, uh, and it was really easy this time because his Manuel, he's just breathing together with us and he has this handheld camera and he's just one of, a part of the family. And, uh, mm -hmm. So, um, but Stellan, he is, he is often answering these questions so much more interesting than I do. So well, I'm going to ask the question a little different to you, Stellan. Uh, Andrea just said that, you know, she wants to forget the DP is there. Have you worked with cinematographers that wouldn't allow you to forget they were there? Well, I, I, I never forget where the cinematographer is. I had a, a discussion with Lars about that, Lars von Trier, when he said, Stellan, I got a very nice uh, close-up of you in the last uh, time we took the scene. And I said, um, yes, I know, because I walked in to get that one. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, see, and he said, you're not supposed to know. Of course I know. To me, um, uh, Manuel has worked with, uh, I worked with him before on, on Lars's films. 
and and he's learned a lot from Lars, but he's also given Lars a lot of, of fantastic material. He he uh, he becomes to me he becomes like another actor in the scene, mm -hmm. and uh, I know what he's doing. I know where he is, but he. He, he moves also like another actor. He looks over there and now he's looking over there. I mean, he becomes really a part of the scene. So he never, whatever he does, he never disturbs you. He just mm -hmm. becomes uh, an organic part. Wow, yeah. amazing, the be beautifully shot. Um, you know, the three of you working together and then with Manuel <clears throat> is something, but there are a lot of other people in, in an awful lot of the scenes. In so many of the scenes, you're not alone. And you, and it's not just one or two other actors in the frame, it's a big family. And it's an extended family of family and friends. Maria, we'll start with you. Um, did that, was that daunting to you? Did, you? did you think at the beginning, did you have a plan of how these ensemble uh, could work together in, in terms of casting and shooting was that a particular challenge in itself? Um, you know, I started out writing for six months, trying to, you know, only have four children, only have two doctors, you know, <laughs> uh, fictionalizing, uh, the, you know, the reality. And I just, uh, I just saw that it just uh, destroyed the whole inner logic of my natural story. So I just realized it had to be a very overpopulated film. And uh, it had to be this uh, blended family, which had, you know, many, many, many kids, um, which was true. And so really, that, what you're saying is the overpopulation came from your own life experience. Yeah, exactly. And it's easier and, and, for you to just feel comfortable yeah. with that. Yes, and uh, and I wanted it to be a very physical experience. Very much, you know, it's a movie about life, and uh, and this is life, <laughs> this mess <laughs> in yeah. a way, you know. Yeah. A blended family as well is also a mess uh, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love the scene where the family does the pyramid, and everybody piles on, and the physicality, the touching is uh, of, of the whole family all physically on top of each other. It's so uh, powerful, you know, and, and, and like you said, it's a movie about life. Uh, it reminds me of something the director Nick Rogue said to me a long time ago. He said, I don't like to call them art films. I like to call them life films. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> I it, love it is, that. It's a life film. Um, <laughs> One other thing in terms of talking about the blending, uh, I understand you did, uh, Maria, blend uh, non-professionals with professionals. The non-professionals are the ultimate professionals, they're doctors. <laughs> um, can you talk a little about that choice and what that uh, gave? And then I'd like to ask the actors about working with these uh, uh, people also. Um... You know, since I've been, uh, since this is my story, a true story, I've been in and out of hospitals for many years, and I know a lot of uh, doctors. I've studied a lot of uh, them as human beings and realizing they're very much like us, you know, uh, with their faults and private lives, which disturbs their professional days and work. And um, studying them uh, and having a great time with that. So I was very, very early aware that I really wanted to do this with professionals. Did Not it, the professionals I know from my own story, but casting. Yes, casting. Uh, yeah. Did it pose any challenges in terms of blending professional actors with the uh, people who are medical professionals? I mean, there's always a risk that it won't work, mm -hmm. always. You know, but it's always a risk anyway, you know? So now, I don't I have think- to ask you though, I, have, I have to ask, is the really unpleasant doctor actually a doctor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I find that amusing. But all of them are, and they are so good at um, defending their characters. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Andrea and Stellan, have either of you ever played medical professionals in uh, film or TV? 
Uh, yes, I played a doctor in the TV series, uh, but my profession was really not that important. Uh, so uh, have you, Stellan? I don't know. I think I many, many years ago in the TV series also came in as a doctor suddenly. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, I never consider, I, I try not to play the profession. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but in, in working with these non-professionals, did they look to you for coaching or helping, or was it just fairly uh, a straightforward experience of sitting with them? Is there anything special or particular about those scenes? Because everybody else in the movie is a professional actor. I yeah, well, the, well, 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 the, the, the relationship, because they know what they're doing and they know how to do it. And they're perfect at that. But of course, they're really nervous when they come in and meet professional actors. And they, don't, they think they have to do more. Yeah. And they don't. Yeah. So, so, so first of all, I think that uh, all three of us, we were very happily making sure that they felt good and loved. And, uh, and then they could just deliver what they were good at. Yeah, they were wonderful. And uh, some of them were really, really nervous. And uh, I remember one of them just started to cry. Uh, and she was, she was wonderful, but she was so scared. And um, but once, the, once we started to shoot the scene, uh, they were all really brilliant and they just said their lines. <laughs> and, and Stella and I were like, they're brilliant. I know, <laughs> they're so good. And we struggled and tried to be, you know, do our best, but they were just amazing. So yeah, that was really interesting. I love yeah, it. Um, going back to something uh, we talked about a little bit with the, um, the temperature and everything, um, one of the things that struck me about the film was there's never a time where anything goes too far. I was watching some TV the other night, um, uh, and I was thinking I'd love to talk to the director about working with the actress because I wonder how much he got her to cut back, or, uh, because it was too much. <laughs> so I wondered, you know, was it just impossible to have her not do too much. Where in this movie, it was such a pleasure because nobody ever does too much. But how in the intensity of the, of the drama, you know, this is a person who is facing death within weeks of her life and family. Everything is so extremely uh, volatile and emotional. Was there anything that that makes you feel that this movie or this experience was a, a different kind of acting challenge or was there this awareness you know how do you not go how do you not cross a line to make it too much was that something you talked about in the shooting and and in the in the filming and in the, in the in the scenes themselves or in general how do you how do you work that that's, that's what you under makes sense yes it's done what <laughs> That's for Andrea. She, she does most of the acting. <laughs> Andrea? Well, uh, usually I'm told that I do too little. Uh, so uh, usually it's not a problem that I do too much. Um, so, uh, and if I, if I believe in what I do, it's, it cannot be too much because I just try to be truthful and um, mm. So, but, but like Maria said, we did so many temperatures in every scene. And I am sure that some of the takes are maybe too much, but I don't know what that is really. It's, well, uh, uh, well, let me ask a, a more specific and less kind of abstract, uh, wacky question. No. Um, were, were, there, were there more takes in making this movie? Did you find the secret was lots of takes or less takes than normal? More takes than normal or less takes than normal? Well, some of the scenes, I would say more takes than normal and some of the scenes less takes than normal. Maria, um, does that match your memory of shooting? Me? Yes. No. Ah. Does that match your, your you memory know, of, of... You know, I, I can't... Uh, I'm a director, so I don't see the other director's work, you know? No, but for yourself, uh, did you feel like you had a sense that you need lots and lots of takes to get this right, 
or your your aspiration was less or it's just or not that way you know it's, it's so this this movie is like uh uh um uh, chamber play yeah cham chamber play in many yeah. scenes only with the two of them you know and there is all about uh having the right nuances very very specific small things and sometimes that worked out like in only three takes you know or in one take because the delivery was so challenging <laughs> so there was no use doing another take mm -hmm. yeah you know so and these scenes are andreas uh, um, you know she has a couple of those in this movie which is you know where you ask for something very challenging and you don't know how she will interpret it before mm -hmm. she's actually doing it you know mm -hmm. and and that's the gift and then it's the take voila and then you have all the scenes with all the characters uh, which is a mise-en-scene where you have to to work quite a long time to get it alive you know with the family all the kids yeah to choreograph and, uh, Yes, and also we had this, um, uh, Manuel and I, we had this uh, approach that we really wanted to make uh, editing in the camera, you know, so that we had long takes and, you know, get close ups and you get big <laughs> scenes and yeah, in one and, and that's very wonderful when it works. So we worked th there, you would have many takes. And, and, and here's a writing question for you. Um, the film to me is very authentic to the entertainment business. The two people are entertainment business professionals, arts business professionals. Uh, but we see virtually nothing of their world. You see it at the beginning and then the focus is on their private lives. But somehow you sustain the feeling that these are sophisticated arts oriented people with their vanities and their obsessions and everything was there ever a draft where we saw more of their work and more of their world or was that never part of it no there was, it was never a part that was uh, i mean it could have been you know half a minute more from uh, her um for, from her uh, dance um show mm -hmm. in the beginning uh but so I think you have to see it in a way, you know, you have to physically see something. At the but beginning to establish that. Yeah, so that yeah. wasn't enough, you know, just to get the sense of it. And, right. and it was, maybe it was a, a minute more in total with the scenes there. Um, right. Yeah. And as for uh, Thomas's part, he just walks uh, out of the theater, you know, when she's sitting in the car yep. and uh, yeah. And that's, you know, it's just one picture, but which also tells something of what kind of status his, ha he has within his profession. Right. You know, this building in itself is, means a lot. Stalin, if, uh, if I were to uh, work with you and, and cast you to play a, a, a director, uh, what, uh, what comes to your mind? What do you call upon from your work with directors that you think are the characteristics of uh, that profession? Well, they're so different, but but uh, I think they have one thing in common. I ha I always have a feeling that a director's childhood is uh, a little child who doesn't have any friends, who sits in a room and creates his own reality. And then when he grows up, he has to continue. Um, and I think that's common for many of the really good directors, at least. Of course, there are directors that are just craftsmen that uh, don't put their soul into it. But all the good auteurs have a slightly disturbed childhood, I think. Interesting. And, and, and <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Based on my- <laughs> I notes. looked at you there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you about your childhood now. <laughs> um, you know, one last question for, um, you know, a movie about health and uh, and illness in a time when the entire world is grappling with illness and health and uh, um, issues like this. Have you had responses to the movie? Um, do you think the movie, uh, Maria, this is for you. Uh, do you think the movie has some specific uh, reference to the time we're in or is, is um, attracting people or 
um, influencing and affecting people in a different way uh, than maybe when you started making the film? Um, luckily, we premiered in Toronto 2020, so we had, uh, you know, we had almost seven months before the pandemic. Yeah. So we in Toronto and in Berlin and premiered in Norway, uh, you know, um, before this. Yeah. And I think, um, I, you know, I think that the difference is very much that during the pandemic, people don't want to watch films containing illness and, right uh, you know it's too depressing as it is yeah <laughs> and then again it's not a depressing movie you know so you try yeah. to say yes but it's not it's not it's a love story it's a different kind of love story it's about life and not about death yeah so i think it's you know it doesn't really deal with that kind of um subjects which we are facing in the real world now right yeah, so people, I think um, it's uh, for them, for those who actually walks in and watches it, it's mm -hmm. very, very life affirming. Let me ask one more question for the actors uh, or for all three of you. Um, the movie really talks a lot. The characters are really grappling with what we call life work balance because it seems they're out of balance. Um, do you think, uh, Andrea, do you think that the life work balance, the challenge of that in the entertainment industry, the world you work in, do you think it's more severe or more specific or is this a, just a general condition of life? I'm so sorry, but do you have a dog there? That's all I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I totally lost concentration there because what is it doing? Oh, hello, dog. I'm sorry. Can you ask me that question once again? <laughs> oh, so cute. He has oh. uh, he has separation anxiety, so he. I can uh, see that. Uh, his oh. mother is not here, and so I have him on my lap because otherwise he'd be talking through the entire interview. Because I um. saw this little head, and I was like, "What's going on? What's going on there?" Okay. <laughs> Busted. I'm so he sorry. also has a, a a good sweater on. I don't know if you, you can see that. <laughs> of um, course he does. Yeah, we're, because it's sweater. so cold here in Palm Springs. You you can't imagine how cold it is. <laughs> um, oh. So uh, the, yeah, the yes. question was life work balance in show business and entertainment. Do you think there are specific challenges uh, to that, or it's just uh, that's just the way of the world? Well, I have three kids myself, and um, I, I, I can, I think about those things all the time, uh, because I want, when they are grown up, I, I don't want them to hate me. I don't want them to look at their childhood as something terrible because I wasn't there. So I think about these things all the time. It's. Uh, it's sometimes it's really hard and I don't think we are the best ones to know what's right. Yeah. I think it's actually the kids who knows what's right. So very often we say things like, it's so important to, to be a good mom. I have to, you know, do this uh, and then I'll become a better mom. And they will, you know, we mm -hmm. say all these things to ourselves to justify us. And um, so, yeah, it's it's not always easy. And 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 seeing it through their eyes. I'm trying to think of something funny to ask Stalin, like what would happen if your children decided to go into show business? But uh, I've, too I've, late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you push them, or did they, or or did they uh, demand that they be part of it? Uh, I've never pushed them. I I think they they have to deal with their own lives. I I, I try to give them a. A decent uh, childhood full of love, but their life decisions has to be their own, because if they're if they fail and they, because I wanted them to be actors, then it's my fault. And yeah. if they succeed, it's because of me and not thanks to them. I so have to ask uh, one last question on that point. Do you remember a time when one of your children was saying they're going to make this a career, they're going to pursue this art that you've chosen for your life? Do you remember how long ago that was and what your reaction was? No, because it, it never came like a statement. They were suddenly just working so, suddenly. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, you could say that one son, Gustav, he knew when he was three that he wanted to become an actor because he saw that I had fun. And uh, Alexander, he didn't want to become an actor until he was in his 20s. 
uh, and then suddenly he, he got the bug. So you never know, but it's it's uh, their life, and I have no responsibility whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria, are any of your children pursuing a life in the arts? Yes, five out of six. <laughs> <laughs> and you're okay with it? Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much the same as Stellan, you know? You are just scared, you know, you just hope that they will have you know succeed in the way that they're able to work but because that's what yeah. it's all about you know you know you know we all know how tough it is it's not yeah the exactly yeah. yeah well listen uh congratulations on an extraordinary movie truly extraordinary film and uh i i thank you for it i thank you for the bravery and uh and the accomplishment and uh i'm jealous of the people who now get to see it for the first time i'll see it again thank you Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so, much. so much. Thank you.